Okay, so we've got this guy named Ben who's 25 but looks super young. Ben is seen arguing with his girlfriend, Susie, who labels him a loser. Fed up, he calls it quits, which further provokes Susie. She hurls stuff at him, and in that moment, time slows down for Ben. After the breakup, Susie swiftly moves on, finding comfort in another guy. Ben catches sight of them together at the college canteen and is left heartbroken. To divert himself, he enrolls in art classes. Given his lifelong interest in portraiture, Ben effortlessly produces remarkable paintings that even impress his instructor. Ben excels in crafting hyper-realistic human portraits. However, at night, things get incredibly tough for him. Ben can't seem to overcome his breakup. Whenever he shuts his eyes, Susie appears. Days go by, and he gradually morphs into an insomniac. Now Ben can't get a wink of sleep. The memories of his ex-girlfriend are gradually driving him into a spiral of gloom and mania. Overwhelmed by remorse and pain, Ben finally rings Susie and implores her to return. He apologizes for having muddled up their relationship, vowing never to repeat his mistakes. Despite Ben going to such lengths for her, Susie declines and abruptly ends the conversation. This plunges Ben into an even deeper pit of wretchedness. If only he could freeze time and ogle at bosoms. In the days that follow, he endeavors to pass his time. Ben reads books, watches movies, and embarks on solitary trips to other cities. One night, he ventures into a nearby Dukan, where he spots a job vacancy notice for a night shift position. Ben deems this the perfect chance to while away time and earn some money, thus applying immediately. The subsequent day, he secures an appointment with the manager, Jenkins, and eventually lands the job. Ben is finally content after a long duration, having a hunch that his life is on the cusp of transformation. As Ben grows accustomed to his new employment, he notices how each of his colleagues goes about passing their time in diverse ways. The cashier, Sharon Pont, possesses the most unique style. She always conceals the clock with assorted items, believing this would make time pass slowly. Additionally, there's a prankish chap by the name of Barry Brickman, who never takes work seriously. Together with his equally sly mate, Matt Stevens, they indulge in varying pranks on the female customers, including slipping intimate items into their bags. Some clients are taken aback upon discovering these items, while others opt to retain them. Their boss, Jenkins, appears indifferent to the passing of time. He can ramble endlessly about his riches and success. The moment he starts boasting about himself, time zips by for him. Among all the late-night shift workers, Ben has the most peculiar way of passing time. In the depths of his sorrow, Ben disconnects from time and reality. In simpler terms, he uses his supernatural abilities to halt time, along with his surroundings, so he can do as he pleases. Normally, folks would nab money or engage in explicit activities, but Ben simply wants to refine his artistic talents. Being enamored by the female form, he selects random customers, delicately unclothes them, and begins sketching their portraits. Ben harbors no lecherous intentions towards them. His sole aim is to keep his love for art alive. Once he finishes, he attires them back and cracks his fingers, allowing time to resume its course. This is Ben's routine now. It's not something to boast about, but at least he doesn't feel as despondent or unhinged anymore. At home, Ben often hangs out with his closest pal, Sean. These two have been tight since childhood. Sean is the complete opposite of Ben. All he lusts after is a woman's affection, whereas Ben simply goes ahead without their consent. It's disclosed that he's visited every exotic dance club in town. During one of his night shifts, Ben runs into the cashier, Sharon, in the changing room. He seems to have feelings for her, yet he hesitates to voice them. However, in their conversation, Sharon takes a bite of his sandwich. Startled, a pickle bit sticks to Sharon's cheek and she struggles to remove it, but in vain. Witnessing her dilemma, Ben intervenes and wipes it off for her, sparking a rather cheesy moment between them. After some time, Sharon decides to leave and makes her way to the exit. Ben wishes to pause the moment and dwell in it for a week, but before he realizes it, Sharon has already left. Later on during work, Matt suddenly emerges from one of the cubicles and discloses his movie plans with Sharon. This devastates Ben, prompting him to ponder over his misfortune. 
Memories from his school days resurrected, involving his first love, the brightest girl in class, admired by all. One day, she sustains an injury and wears a cast. Classmates scribble encouraging notes on it daily to lift her spirits. Ben desires to do the same, but shies away. Sadly, this hesitation proves costly as the girl removes her cast before Ben can act. Everyone mocks her upon noticing hair growth on her arm. Ben steps in to console her, vowing his support. Their bond blossoms into love. One fine day, she asks Ben if he wants to kiss her, to which he gladly agrees, planning a tryst at their usual spot. Excitement builds as Ben anticipates his first kiss, losing sleep in the days leading up to the weekend meeting. Disappointment strikes as the girl fails to show up, breaking his heart. The following day, Ben discovers she has moved away with her family, leaving him feeling helpless and dejected for the first time. Going back to the present, Jenkins gathers all his employees and announces a friendly football match with his pals. Ben and the others aren't keen on playing, but have no choice. The supermarket team suffers a heavy defeat, as it's evident none of them grasp the game. The rival team racks up goals one after another, leading 26-0. Fed up, Ben freezes time and retreats to the locker room for a breather. Suddenly, a chap unfreezes and dashes out. Unveiling Ben isn't the sole possessor of this power. After a while, he returns and snaps his fingers, restoring time. In the fervor, Matt kicks the ball so wildly it smacks Jenkins in the face. Rushed to the hospital, the teammates dispersed, leaving only Ben and Sharon. In the subsequent scene, they visit a nearby eatery, aiming to connect better. There, Ben learns she's unattached, and Matt was joking about dating her. Sharon shares her ambitions, stirring Ben to do the same. She discloses her desire to meet a painter, believing they perceive true beauty against its will. Their conversation shows a spark between them. Post their informal rendezvous, Ben escorts Sharon home, awkwardly ruining their inaugural kiss by pecking her cheek instead of her lips, dwelling on the infamous pickle incident. The following day, Jenkins, scarred from the accident, declares a birthday bash. Sharon invites Ben as her companion, to which he cheerfully assents. Later, the boys are tasked with preparations, Ben assigned to procure a stripper. Inexperienced in such matters, he enlists Sean's aid, offering to bring him to the event upon success. They venture to a local club where Sean, with his expertise, secures a performer. Subsequently, a call from an anonymous art lover elevates Ben's spirits, desiring to exhibit his work in a city gallery for the first time. Yet it's a prank by Barry and Matt. Decked up for the party, Ben fetches Sharon, exuberantly sharing news of his art appreciation. She congratulates him warmly, and they head to the celebration. Upon arrival, the festivity is in full swing with Sean bonding with the stripper in odd dance displays by Matt and Barry, overseen by a DJing Jenkins. Barry catches sight of Jenkins's brother's girlfriend Susie among the guests, stirring tension. The stripper's arrival adds heat to the event as Sean clicks with her instantly. Meanwhile, in the restroom, Ben encounters Susie, who ardently pushes to reconcile despite Ben's heart being elsewhere. She abruptly kisses him against his wishes. Ben promptly shoves her away, but on turning, he spots Sharon witnessing the entire event. Ben tries to clarify it's not as it seems, but the naive cashier departs without a word. Shortly after, Ben heads straight to Sharon's flat, aiming to elucidate everything, but her fury blinds her. When she starts hurling abuses, Ben, perturbed, exits. Plunged back into depression and insomnia due to the breakup, Ben's lone anticipation lies in his supposed art gallery rendezvous. In the subsequent scene, the much-awaited day dawns, and Ben arrives with his finest artworks. As anticipated, the proprietor refutes any prior appointment, revealing Ben's prank. Just as Ben prepares to depart, the proprietor notices sketches of Sharon, intrigued to examine them. Impressed, he offers Ben a night to present his work in the gallery. Days later, Sharon receives an invite to Ben's art exhibit. Despite her ire, she opts to grace the gallery. Sharon is startled to find the displayed artwork center on her upon arrival. Ben ceased crafting portraits of others, dedicating all his time to Sharon, his beloved. She marvels, pondering how he knew her anatomy so precisely. Meanwhile, Sharon and Ben finally rendezvous. Ben attempts to elucidate the party night, but Sharon opines it unnecessary. She discovers his profound love through his paintings. Subsequently, they draw closer, sharing a romantic kiss amid the art gallery. 
In the climactic scene, Ben freezes everything using his powers, enabling Sharon to move within the frozen realm. They venture into the snow, surrounded by suspended snowflakes. Finally, the enamored duo share another kiss, and the movie ends here. Thank you for watching Box Office Studio. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed our content. Your support fuels our passion for storytelling and analysis. Stay tuned for more exciting movie recaps.